All right, I'm doing a bathroom remodel, and uh, what I've done here is I've uh, used a rotary hammer drill to bust out the old concrete, and I replaced the P-trap down underneath here. It was an old cast iron one, about 40 years old, so I dug this out with a rotary hammer and replaced the old plumbing. So I put in the new riser, and yesterday, uh, me and a friend, we filled in the hole with dirt, put the concrete in, but before I did that, I should have cut this riser, this PVC riser pipe coming up from the P-trap, I should have cut it to length, because now there's no good way to get a saw from the outside to cut this down to the length that I'm going to need to because I'm probably going to need to cut this somewhere down below the grade, below level. So this this number two is probably somewhere in this ballpark where I need to get that, and that is below the floor. So, how do you cut this when you can't get a saw down in this hole? So, there's an attachment that you can get at different stores. Uh, our local Home Depot should have it in stock. You can order them online. But I'm going to cut it down to length right in this ballpark. And then I'm going to attach the attachment to the drill. And you can actually cut from the inside of the pipe and do a cut. And there is going to be enough access. So, I'm going to cut it down close. I'm going to triple check all my measurements for my drain. I'm doing the Schluter Systems Curdy drain. And I'll make sure I know exactly what height with the spacers and with the drain I need to get. And then I'll cut it from the inside. If you know of any tips or tricks on how to, with very limited access, with about an inch access, cut from the outside, that's great. Leave a comment in the uh, section below. So one part of what I've done right here, right now, is I had some all-purpose gravel down in here, but I want to make sure when I cut that from the inside that none of it falls into the pipe after I open it up. So you can see I've got it off to the side out here. Just use some uh, decent sized screwdriver, push it up to one side, just kind of use your fingers, scoop it up out and out, brush it off out of the way. So. Getting closer to, to the uh, measuring point here. Should be coming up next. I want to show real quick the inside PVC pipe cutter I'm using. There's different brands and makes and models of these. Um, generally, they're going to look a lot like this. Got this one at Home Depot, but you can get them online and other stores. So this end here, into the drill. This end here, down inside the pipe. So, all right. So. I am not experienced in measuring, and to get this cut off right, I definitely want to err on the side of leaving too much, because then I can always cut a little bit more off, but I cannot easily add more pipe back on. So I want to make sure I don't go too shallow on this. So to do my measurements, I'm starting to look at this. This, this spacer should be sitting on the ground when this is cut to the right length. So, how far off from the ground am I is a good question to answer. Okay. And this is, um, and I'll get more precise with this here, but it looks like three and maybe uh, an eight. So the first thing you might think is, okay, I want to cut this pipe down to get that three eighths. But this hub is allows the pipe to stick up a little bit further than that. You do not have to cut this. So the bottom of this sits on the ground. You have to cut this so the hub sits with the pipe. All right, so we 
rigged up this based on some advice online. So we've got right here the cutting bit. I actually used an impact driver. Not sure this is the best solution, but the collet here, this collar actually created a more flush, sturdy surface than the end of my drill. The end of my drill did not, when this was out, um, this was a little less flush. So my impact had a more even surface. Took this piece of board. Um, this is pulling straight from another review. Took a half inch bit, drilled this hole. And then I found out that this is right around, this gap is right around three inches here. And then I did all my measurements from that point to get down below the grade. I do have a uh, trash bag stuffed down in there, so I should be able to pull that out. Um, probably do vacuum out the top to get those little PVC shavings. Now, I did take my Curdy drain, because that's the system I'm using here, my Schluter Curdy drain, and I did a fit on this. And the particular tray that I'm using, um, this spacer, these spacers come in the box with all the stuff. The spacers here should rest on the floor when this is in the right way. So I've got this where it is maybe an eighth of an inch high um, or you know depending on how you wiggle it it's it's right there. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm taking my deburring tool a burr is kind of like a you know, pokey, you know, sharp edge spot. Taking this plumbing deburring tool, taking it around the top, the top edge on both the inside and the out, and I'm putting it at a bit of an angle, just basically trying to take off another small amount of that PVC pipe on the top to bring it down just a little bit further. So these, when they've got the... Uh, drain in there will sit right on the floor instead of just a bit high because this is the same spacing as the eventual tray I'm going to use. One thing I can't show on the video, it's a little hard to tell, is um, there's a high spot right here. Really hard to tell. Um, with newer iPhones, you're in your measure app. You can actually go into the measure app and switch and there's a level mode. So what I'm doing is I'm setting the iPhone in here upright, just dropping it in, and it just barely reaches across. So I'm setting it on the edge, and I'm seeing that this side is a little high. So I can't video that, obviously, on the phone I'm using, but what I've found out is that this is all pretty close to level, except right here, in this area, is a little high. So depending on your installation, obviously you don't want to make the low spots lower. You want to make the high spots in line and level with everything else. So I'm going to take my deburring tool, but now I know which area to work on is in here. So I'm gonna check that a little bit more, make sure I'm focused on the right area, and get this a little bit closer to level. Get another dry fit to make sure this is in the right spot. This is my Schluter drain. Here's my spacer. And what I wanna make sure of is that this is hitting the ground all the way around. And you can hear that it is all the way around here. Now this side is just a tiny bit off the ground, but when you press into that, it does sit. I'm gonna do a little bit more twisting to see if there's any more give to go down on this, because uh, reducing the height of the PVC with this, when it is almost perfectly level in there and on the top, you can see comes right up to the hub very nicely. So the fit is very good. It's right where it needs to be up against this. And at this point, you know, I'm probably getting a little nitpicky with uh, that amount of gap. Considering there's gonna be a thin set on here that's gonna build up just a little bit and that's gonna come towards this. 
So here's the shower tray I'm using, Schluter Curdy Shower ST. And you can see the exact model there. The center around the drain actually breaks out without too much trouble. It's got a few little uh, nibs here that you can just uh, pop off. I cut them off. I'm taking this half as my spacer, and I'm going to slide this under the drain to verify uh, verify the fit. Okay. It's going to be a little hard to see at first, but this is that foam spacer underneath here. This is going to have thin set in here on the top. It's hard to see where my fingers are at. And it's going to have thin set directly on the floor. Well, the tray itself is going to be thin set applied to the floor. But this insert, since I'm not going to have access to the plumbing, this is a concrete slab floor. You can have different situation or you may have a slab as well. But um, what I'm going to have to do, and I'll have to plan this part out later, is I'm going to have to apply my PVC primer and cement around the same time I have, uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to check uh, Schluter's reference to see if I'm going to need to have the thin set ready at the same time to, uh, to get that in there to be able to get that to fit. I may just be able to do the PVC work because I'm doing this uh, after hours, after my regular job. It's a do-it-yourselfer. I'm going to make sure that I have a plan of attack sequence, but I'm going to make sure that I've got my PVC ready, and if I do need it, I may not at the same time, if I need to have any of my thin set mixed up to install this at the same time. I don't think that I would need to. I could basically just do what I've done here. It just barely slides in and out, which is good. And I could, uh, obviously I will clear out a lot of what I've got here on the outside. But from here, I could um, apply back butter my foam on the bottom uh, apply a good amount on the top because we want to create a bond i believe between these obviously watch Schluter's videos to make sure you're familiar with this but uh, my plan without checking the videos again from what i've seen before there's going to be a thin set on the floor and there's going to be thin set on top of this and this is going to then slide Underneath, and it's obviously going to have its sister half here that goes in this side as well. Obviously, I'm going to clean up my work area and all this kind of stuff. But uh, that's the plan of attack. So, if you have had a uh, made the same kind of mistake I did, I actually busted down into the concrete, replaced the old cast iron PVC drain, and uh, Filled it in with dirt, then put a the little bit of gravel, and then this concrete. But what I hadn't done was I hadn't cut this riser to measure. So that basically meant I had to use this tool, which is specifically made for inside PVC cutting, right here. So this worked great. I would highly recommend practicing your cuts so you learn how it works, depending on which tool you get. This screw can come loose, which then means your screw and your blade are going down your drain. Obviously, you don't want that situation. So this is just a regular thin trash bag that I have stuffed down in there. So if I lose anything, it's just stopping right there. If you don't do that, you skip that step, um, and you do happen to lose this, Obviously tighten it first to try to avoid that. One of these little magnetic wands that extends. Check your tool, but on mine, that is a magnetic blade. So if you do happen to lose that blade down there, or let's say your drill or your collet fails and the whole shaft goes down, check your tool ahead of time. Mine's magnetic, this is gonna hold. But uh, if you do have a uh, disaster with the tool and you have to get down in there, it is possible with one of these for three or five bucks, just a few dollars, to fish your parts back out again, depending on how far down it's gone. So, good luck to you on yours.